Next, we will take our broadcast to Singapore, where we will find our next speakers located at the Ambassador's residence. Riku, are you there? Good morning, good afternoon and good evening to Finland and the rest of the world. I'm Riku Mäkelä from Embassy of Finland in Singapore, and right now I'm at the residence of Finnish Ambassador with four friends of Finland and Fintech. We start with welcoming remarks by Finnish Ambassador to Singapore, His Excellency Antti Vanske. Mr. Ambassador, the video stream is yours. Thank you. Yes, hello everybody. It's my pleasure to uh, welcome you all and open this session in Singapore by saying that Singapore is a very appealing place to do business. There are tens of Finnish companies in Singapore and more than 10,000 European companies. Point companies usually come to Singapore because of a stable and predictable business environment, because of very high level of innovation and education, and because of excellent connections, and of course a high standard of living. So from Singapore you can cover the rest of Southeast Asia as well. So. Uh, this is, of course, was not by any means an exhaustive list of reasons. But even du during these COVID times, there's much going on. Singapore is a dynamic place. One of the prime examples is the annually organized FinTech Festival, which gathers tens of thousands of companies from every corner of the world. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Now, Frank Lundqvist, started in Singapore in financial sector 36 years ago when he studied the Singapore branch of Finnish bank called Kansali Soseke Pankki in those days. Frank, what could you tell us about Singapore's role in the financial world? During my 36 years working in the financial sector in Singapore, I've seen a tremendous transformation. Singapore is listed as the fifth largest financial center in the world. It is also the second largest wealth management center in the world, jointly with Hong Kong after Switzerland. Uh, total assets under management in Singapore is 4 trillion US dollars, and there are over 200 uh, family offices here in Singapore. Uh, Singapore is also the third largest foreign exchange center in the world after New York and London. Uh, last year the daily average turnover was a staggering 640 billion dollars per day. There are 132 banks in Singapore uh, including all the leading banks, international banks in the world and most of these banks cover the whole of Asia-Pacific out of Singapore. Total assets under management by the banks is three trillion dollars. The next thing to come are digital banks operated by non-bank companies. Uh, the Monetary Authority of Singapore is about to issue five licenses. Uh, there are currently 21 applicants. Uh, to summarize, the Singapore Financial Centre represents about 13% of Singapore's uh, GDP and employs about 200,000 persons. Uh, to conclude, I would like to mention a word about fintech. There are about a thousand companies in Singapore with 10,000 employees and the firms last year raised about 1 billion US dollars. They're slightly behind to this year, but uh, the figure is still very representative. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. Now we move to Sami Jääskeläinen, who is the head of Nordic Innovation House Singapore. Sami, please tell us what is the Nordic Innovation House and how is the ecosystem for fintech and other tech companies here? Yes, so also greetings from my side from sunny Singapore. 
So Nordic Innovation House is essentially a, what we call as a community platform which supports and helps and accelerates high quality Nordic tech startups, scale ups and growth companies that are coming to Singapore. And of course, many of them are using Singapore as a springboard then for the Southeast Asian markets. Uh, we are a joint Nordic collaboration uh, between the Nordic countries and uh, basically in our Singapore team we have uh, Business Sweden, uh, Innovation Norway, Embassy of Finland and Promote Iceland. Uh, we do have five offices globally these days. Uh, our journey started from Silicon Valley uh, followed by New York and then Singapore and Hong Kong and Tokyo is the latest add-on to our, our network. And then, while we are talking about the fintech, so maybe I highlight a couple of uh, key things from uh, Singapore fintech ecosystem. So today we have about 40 plus uh, corporate innovation lab operating in fintech space alone. Uh, there are 30 plus different fintech uh, accelerators and in, uh, incubators in Singapore. Uh, obviously, like the regulatory landscape is very, very uh, exciting here and good. Uh, MAS, so the Monetary Authorization of Singapore, is having their uh, regulatory sandbox. They have the uh, API uh, exchange. Uh, Frank was talking about the new banking licenses, which are about to announce in any day these days. And of course, then we have the FinTech Festival, where also Nordic Innovation House were uh, bringing the Nordic FinTech companies last year here in, in Singapore. And maybe the last thing to mention uh, as, a, as a cherry on top of the cake is that uh, Startup Genome just released this week their Global FinTech Ecosystem Report, where Singapore ranked the best in Asia, uh, uh, 14 globally, uh, just behind uh, Silicon Valley, New York and London. So if you are a Finnish FinTech company and want to kick off your Southeast Asia journey in a FinTech space, Singapore is place to start. Thank you. Thank you, Sami. Now we move to Gregory Lingris, who is Managing Director of F-Secure Consulting here in Singapore. Gregory, what would you say about the digital transformation of financial sector in Singapore and Asia based on your uh, large number of clients in that sector? Uh, well, hello everyone. I think it's, it comes as no surprise, right? That, uh, organizations' digital transformation strategies have really been expedited by the, the pandemic. So uh, what we've seen is a big push by the traditional banking sector to become more digital. And uh, you know their normal processes just aren't efficient anymore, right? So when we look at onboarding through, through face-to-face or in-branch or paper-based uh, know your clients and anti-money laundering, these processes are just, are just not gonna be uh, effective anymore. So uh, they've had to make a big change. I think you know, that said, there's a lot of innovation happening here as well. Right? So, uh, the same panel here has mentioned a few times, but uh, the MAS is arguably one of the most progressive um, central banks in the world. Right? And they t- really look outward to hunt for innovation and technology. And then they assess it and see how they can uh, in- enhance this uh, digital economy with it. So whether it's investing in young fintech businesses, or whether it's looking at blockchain or smart contracts, and now digital banks, right, which will be uh, issued in the next couple of months. So I think these, uh, these new digital banks are going to put a lot of pressure on traditional banking. Right? So they're going to be able to you know, bank the unbanked. They're going to look at gaining a lot of younger generation market share uh, who are very digital. And uh, you know, people who are unhappy with their service providers are going to be able to move so much easier. So uh, it's going to be interesting. I think this new norm of working is going to be around for a while. So the traditional archaic processes by some traditional banks are going to have to change um, if they want to stay relevant, right? Otherwise, we're going to see a big shift towards these digital banks. And uh, it's, it's going to make for an exciting time over the next two years. 